All right, so we are gonna, we're gonna start looking at some rules that we can use within probability. And uh, there's gonna be two addition rules and then uh, the next section we'll look at two multiplication rules. Uh, the or, we're gonna, that or and and problems will come up again. And uh, some of the stuff I talked to you yesterday about, I'm going to, because uh, we're going to need to hear it here. But um, elementary probability, again, elementary is not because it's easy. Sometimes it's even harder. And in this case, you'll see that elementary probability was harder than this. But elementary, because it's the definition is one fraction. And when you hand, the way you handle the problem, you're just thinking like how many uh, over how many and, and getting the answer. Um, here, there's there's other approaches. There's these addition laws that, that we'll start to look at, um, and there's two cases. So I'm going to start by giving them some additional notes um, that kind of go with this to illustrate the two cases. So first case, um, I'm going to do this abstractly. So let's say we got A or not A, and B or not B. The two way table. I'll make up some numbers here. Okay, and if we get the row totals, we get 12, 7, 19, uh, 8, and 11. Again, those add up to 19. Um, and so let's ask, first ask you a couple simple questions. What's the probability of A here? How many, how many belong to A? 12 out of 19, right? Uh, what's the probability of B? There's eight that belong to B out of the 19. What's the probability of A and B? Okay, so here we got to look not at the margins of the table, but actually in the table, we see there's five that belong to both A and B out of the grand total of 19. And then one more question, what's the probability of A or B? Whatever what, probability of A or B. So, and and is a strict requirement. It, what you're selecting, so those five have to belong both to A and B. Or is a loose requirement. What you're picking could either belong to A and not B, or it could belong to B and not A, or it could belong to both A and B. The only thing you're not looking at is like if it doesn't belong to A or and, and at the same time doesn't belong to B. Um, so how many belong to A or B? 15. Okay, and if you have trouble seeing that, I'll highlight them for you. So these five belong to both A and B, seven belong to A but not B, three belong to B and not A. And that, that together adds up to your 15. Uh, why couldn't I add just the 12 and the 8? Because that counts the 5 twice, right? We saw that, right? We talked about this yesterday. And, and so with this in mind, there's a probability uh, formula that says the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And I want you to see why this is true. So we know the prob our, in our case, like if we, if we put in our numbers, our probability of A or B is 15 out of 19. And that's saying that would be uh, 12 out of 19 plus 8 out of 19 minus 5 out of 19. 
And do you see why we need, like a lot of people will, will just think, hey, it's just, it should just be the first part. It should just be probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B and be done. But do you guys see why we need that, that last part to subtract out? Because that, the 5 was included in both the 12 and the 8, and so we counted it twice, so we need to take it back out. All right. And so this right here is the general formula, and it works. It works really well, um, and it's a formula that we're going to want to know and commit to memory, and we'll be using here and there. Okay, uh, but let me contrast this with a second case. Um, so in this second case, what's the probability of A? Seven out of twenty-two. Probability B. Fifteen out of twenty-two. Probability of A and B. Remember our discussion yesterday. What is it? Zero, okay, because they're in different columns. Like there are no numbers, like the four only belongs to the A. It also belongs to the D, but there's no, nothing I can point to that belongs to both A and B, just the way it's organized, right? Um, and so in this case, it's zero. And you remember any of the fancy, no, uh, fancy terminology I gave you? Uh, not empty set. But events A and B would be considered. Okay, we'll go over it again uh, in, this, in a moment. What's the probability of A or B in this problem? Or is loose? So you're going to have an answer. It, will be not, it won't be zero. You'll take everything that belongs to A, everything that belongs to B. Make sure you're not double counting and put it in there. So what do we get? Everything, right? All 22 out of 22. I'm not going to reduce it, but it's equal to 1. Um, and so let's, let's see if this formula works again on this, on this case. So we got the probability of A and B. Sorry, it should be A or B, not A and B. Which we got at 22 over 22 is equal to the probability of A, which is 7 out of 22, plus the probability of B, which is 15 out of 22, minus the probability of A and B, which is 0 out of 22, and it still works, right? But often in this case, which is a special case, where A and B are, nobody figured out that word yet? Okay, we, we, what we did is we drew Venn diagrams, and we, when we said when we have Venn diagram, they don't intersect. If they, we did this, right? Okay. And when they don't intersect, we say they're mutually exclusive. So when we have this special case when they're mutually exclusive, that means that the probability of A and B equals zero. And because of that, we often reduce the formula to just this piece. Because mutually exclusive means They can't happen at the same time. In other words, probability of A and B is zero. That's what probability of A and B being zero means. They can't happen at the same time. Um, so mutually exclusive, um, also known as disjoint, OK?
So when you're working through a probability problem and you're trying to find the probability of A or B, um, by default, you're in this, okay? Unless it says otherwise, you're, you're not assuming things are mutually exclusive. Now, if it tells you it's mutually exclusive, then that's going to tell you something about A and B, specifically that it's zero, and you're going to be able to make this part zero. And so this actually simplifies to what we think it should be. The probability of A or B uh, is just the probability of A plus the probability of B. There's no overlap, so you're not counting anything twice. So that is what this says. Right? If two events A and B are mutually exclusive, then we can just use the simplified formula. But this is a special case of this general formula here. Right? So you could just memorize this and memorize that mutually exclusive means this is zero. That's even better for you. Okay? Uh, so this, um, that's what this is saying. Now, with that said, so all these problems I'm going to give you, you can use these formulas on, but you'll see that uh, the formulas sometimes are cumbersome, and it's easier to go back and use the elementary probability, and it'll be more natural to do that. Um, and so you want to do what's natural and what's, what's most direct to you, um, but then other times we'll need this, and the, the elementary probability won't work for us. Uh, so let's take a look at one, number one. A bag contains 20 marbles, three colored, and then I need to correct something on here. Let's, let's say 20 balls, because you'll see why. Uh, three are colored red, six are colored green, four blue, two white, and uh, five yellow. One ball is selected at random. Find the probabilities of the following events. Well, let's just do part A right now. Uh, if I want to find the probability that the ball is either red or green, uh, what would be natural for you to do? Or what would be the answer? What over what? 9 over 20? Okay, how'd you get 9? Uh, red, so there are 3 red and there's 6 green, so you're done, right? Um, so that would that approach is what we call elementary probability. That's what we did last section. Uh, if we apply the new probability, we say, okay, we got two events. Uh, we're looking for the probability that's red or green. So I need to think, hmm, are those events mutually exclusive or not? What do you think? Mutually exclusive? Or not? Can can they happen at the same time? That's the question you're asking yourself. If I pick one ball, can it be in both categories? No. So these these are mutually exclusive. So that tells me that the probability of red and green is zero. So I just need to find the probability of red plus the probability of green. There's not going to be not going to be any double counting. And then Probability of red, now I'm going to elementary probability for this part is 3 out of 20. Probability of green is 6 out of 20. That adds up to 9 out of 20. And it still works, but this is longer. And this, you know, it, it's just more thinking. But I do want to show you it works, right? And so what we said does work in this problem. I'm okay whatever method you use as long as you um, show something that makes sense here, okay? Um, I'll let you do B and C on your own. Does this feel easier than the uh, last? Yeah, that's what I said. It's gonna it's gonna feel a little easier here. Um, let's try number three together. And there's another typo. I should say A box contains ten balls, either red or blue. You may take balls from the box one at a time, and you do not replace them back into the box. You must take at least seven balls to guarantee to take at least three red balls. How many blue balls are in the box at the start? So it's, it's one of those, like, you gotta, you got to read it a few times to understand what it's saying. Um, try it out, though.
Okay. Um, so before you explain it, uh, let me set you up with what you're saying. So you're saying four blue. So I'm going to write, I draw four blue. And then that means there's six red, right? So there'd be everybody okay with that? If you if there are four blue, there have to be six red because there's ten all together. Um, so explain why you came up with four blue. All four of those blue balls first. Yeah. So once you select all the red ball, so if there's four blue balls, you guys see what he's saying? You've already selected them. Now there's only red to choose. And so you know for sure everything you select is going to be red. And so there we go. That's the worst case scenario. What's the best case scenario? All three are red in the you know, first three, right? So. Good. And so answer is uh, four. So this one, uh, this one didn't have, this is not a probability problem, this one, so we didn't use a probability formula on, um, but it, this is kind of the context of the probability problem where you're selecting things and changing things around. Uh, number four is going to be having you think about things too as well. Um, if you have trouble on number four, my advice to you when you do it is to plug in some numbers, make up some numbers for how many red, blue, green, brown, and then how many are taken away. So if you make up numbers, then it'll be clear to you what, what happened. Uh, that's a good strategy. Um, so I don't know, I don't want to assume that everybody knows stuff, everything about face cards, but when we get to probability, again, probability is like the mathematics of games and uh, casinos specifically and cards are a big deal there and so I'm gonna, let's do the six together um, but standard deck has 52 cards Andrew Andrew okay. 52 cards um, uh, would your jokers in there no so if uh, 52 cards is without the jokers. That fit, the 52 cards, uh, let's just talk a little bit about cards, can be split into uh, three different suits, right? I meant four. Four different suits. What are they? You got your hearts, your diamonds, your clubs, and your spades, which I don't know. is like, sorry. Something like that, right? I don't have two. It's my, supposed to be my spade. It's supposed to be a curved. I don't know. But you get 13 of each, right? And within those 13, you have what? So what's the smallest number card? It goes, so it goes 2 all the way to what? 10. Okay. And then you have your, your jack, your queen, your king, and ace, uh, you know, depending on what you're playing, sometimes ace is low, like you treat it like a one, sometimes it's high. Um, but that's kind of how it's made. Okay, so if you didn't, if you haven't played cards or didn't know that, you're gonna wanna know that because we're gonna be jumping in, not this section, the next section, we'll be jumping into all kinds of card problems, okay? Um, but here's one of them. So with that in mind, go ahead and get an answer to number six. The probability of an ace or a face card. Um, by the way, what does it mean by a face card? 
What's included as face card? Jack, queen, king. Is an ace a face card? No. Okay, good. So are the two events, the event of getting an ace or a face card, are they mutually exclusive? Yes or no? Can you use the technique? Yeah. Yes, they are, because you can't, if you're picking one card, it can't be both an ace and a face card. Um, so one way to handle this is you can say, well, that's the probability of A plus the probability of F. Did you use that, or did you use elementary probability here? Elementary, okay, so you said it's out of 52, and then uh, there are what? Four aces and 12 face cards. So. 16 out of 52, reduce that to 4 out of 13. Anybody do it differently? Okay. Now, would the formula work here? Because it's evenly distributed, this problem, you could just look within, one, within the 13 and say 4 out of 13 would work. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, let's now take a look at number eight. We want to find the probability for A or B. And I apologize, another typo. It should say the probability of A. It should be P of A, not just A. Probability of A is 0.5. Probability of B is 0.35. And the probability of A and B is 0.2. And usually when they're out of context like this, um, and you don't have much information, this is when you gotta rely more heavily on the formulas, okay? Um, and so this is where you wanna say, well, okay, I'm gonna memorize that probability of A or B, in general, is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And so then you plug in the point 5, 0 0.35, 0 0.2, and you get point what? Point 0.65. Right? Everybody okay with that? Point 0.5 plus point 0.35 is point 0.85. Minus 0.2 is 0.65. Um, if it messes you up, you can make all these two digits. So you can think of 50 plus 35 minus 20 if you want, okay? Um, and you get 65. Now, before we leave this problem, can you, although it doesn't say much about it, can you tell me if A and B are mutually exclusive? You can't tell me? Or you're saying... You can tell me they're not. Why? Okay. So they can happen at the same time. There's a 20% chance that they happen at the same time. Okay. Um, second question is, could you have done this problem using elementary probability? And the answer is yes. And let me just show you uh, something that's helpful in the long run. So I'm going to make a table. A or not A, B or not B, um, a lot, sometimes, especially when they get more complicated, creating a table like this can be helpful. Um, so we know that the probability of A and B is 0.2, so I'm going to put 0.2 here. So this is holding probabilities now. Uh, we know the probability of A is 0.5, I put that here. So that tells me that this right here has got to be 0 0.3, because 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.5. So I know that the probability that, that we get A and not B is 0.3. Um, uh, what else do we know? So we know the probability of B is 0.35. That's here. So this is the probability of, this is going to be, sorry, 0.15. Uh, what's the grand total going to be? So this has got to be 0.5. This has got to be point what? 0.65. And what's this one here? Well, 
Like three five because it's got to add up, right? That's the way tables work. So notice the table gives you a lot more based on what's given to us. You can you can answer other questions. Like if I said, what's the probability we don't? It's not a and not b. You look at the table, it says 0.35. Or if you looked at this, it'd be tougher to come up with that. So table will organize stuff for you a lot better. Now, if I said probability of A or B and I'm using this table, well, these two belong to A, and that one also belong those, you know, belong to B. So if I add these three up, I get uh, 0.65 out of one, which is 0.65. So that would be the um, more of the elementary approach, but it's also I show you this because this is a great way to organize the probabilities when things get more challenging. Okay. Uh, homework is due on Friday, and I don't think you'll find it too challenging. I mean, not it'll still be challenging, but not like not to the degree that we had before. Uh, this last problem is like the last problem on the last uh, homework too, so I get some more practice with that.